really warm welcome to our service this morning here in St Michael's. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Joy. I'm the curate here in the benefice. So let's just pause a moment as we prepare to meet with God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Today we're going to be thinking about what it means to live in mutual love and respect. For we're all equal in the sight of God. And it is God to whom we worship. So we're going to begin our worship this morning by singing the hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us just pause for a moment as we call to mind those things that we need to say sorry for and be ready to confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And having so prayed, may we know God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, pardon you and deliver you from your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we stand as we are able to continue with the Gloria. <coughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we continue by praying together the special prayer for today. God of glory. The end of our searching. Help us lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated as Linda brings us our first reading. And the first reading is taken from Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 1 to 8, and verses 15 to 16. Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without realising it. Remember those in prison, as if you were there yourself. Remember also those being mistreated, as if you felt their their pain in your own bodies. Give honour to marriage and remain faithful to, to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Don't love money, be satisfied with what you have, for God has said, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name 
And don't forget to, to, to do good and to share with those in need. These are our sacrifices that please God. And this is the word of the Lord. Peace to God. Thank you, Linda. And we continue now with our second hymn, Breathe, which will be on the screen. This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me This is my day This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me And I I'm desperate for him closely. When Jesus noticed that all who had come to the dinner were trying to sit at the seats of honour near the head of the table, he gave them this advice. When you are invited to a wedding feast, don't sit in the seat of honour. What if someone who is more, more distinguished than you has also been invited? The host will come and say, 
Give this person your feet. Then you will be embarrassed and you will have to take whatever feet is left at the foot of the table. Instead, take the lowest place at the foot of the table. Then when your host sees you, he will come and say, friend, we have a better place for you. Then you will be honoured in front of all the other guests. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble but themselves will, will be exalted. Then he turned to his host. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives, and rich neighbours, for they will invite you back, and that will be your only reward. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Carol. Father, may the words I speak be those you want spoken, and may the words we hear be those you want heard. And may we take them and use them to your glory. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I wonder, what did you really think about during the Gospel reading just now? Is Jesus really teaching about table manners? Should today's reading be considered a long time alongside those instructions to keep your elbows off the table, not talk with your mouth full, or even which fork to use with the fish course? <laughs> Just as today, when Sunday lunch is essentially a family occasion, so it was in the time of Jesus. Those in a position to do so would invite their friends and family to dine with them on the Sabbath after temple worship. As you read through Luke's Gospel, we find him eating with quite a variety of people. Tax collectors, sinners, Pharisees, lawyers, yes, his friends as well, but also those who are seeking and searching. But on this particular Sabbath day, Jesus has been invited to the home of one of the Pharisees. Not just any Pharisee, one of the leaders of the Pharisees. Now I don't know if you've noticed when in Luke, he's often a little bit kinder to the Pharisees than the other Gospel writers. I do wonder if it's partly because he spent a lot of time in the company of Paul, who himself, by his own omission, was a Pharisee. So we have here Jesus at the home of the, one of the leading Pharisees in receipt of his food, his hospitality. And yet he never misses an opportunity to give his teaching. If you look at the missing word, the verses in today's reading, there was a short gap of word, the verses we didn't have in our gospel reading today. There's often some, a little clue as to what's going on. A little bit of something else that adds a bit of flavour to the day. And then today's reading was no exception. For the incident that takes place in those missing verses was when Jesus was rebuking his fellow guests for their lack of care and concern for the poor, the weak, the vulnerable. And yet, 
despite receiving such a rebuke already from Jesus, he then observes his fellow guests all scrambling for the places of honour at the table. Not recognising that there might be someone in their midst who deserved great honour. And certainly not recognising that in their midst was the one who deserved the greatest honour of all. In the translation of the Bible that we use in church, this story is told as, as a piece of advice. But most other translations refer to it as a parable. And if you think about parables, they always have a deeper meaning. For what Jesus is teaching is more than simple table manners. But he's teaching us about what we might expect to find in, at God's feast, at his eternal wedding feast in heaven. For at that feast, the poor, the weak, the lonely, those who have been humiliated and rejected in this life, will be receiving the places of greatest honour. While those who have tempted to grab honour for themselves will find themselves humiliated and made to sit in the lowest place. To those first listeners, this was indeed radical teaching. It was normal for the well-off, for those who were well-educated, the lawyers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the temple assistants, to regard themselves as superior to everyone else. After all, their wealth, their position was a sign of God's favour, wasn't it? Favour that God had apparently denied the poor, the weak, the lonely, lonely. And while the host may have thought he was excluded from the first parable, he was very much the focus of the second. The parable about who to invite. I think if we're honest, most of us here will tend to say we invite to our table those friends, those family, the people we can get along with. Indeed, the people we might even expect to invite us back. But God doesn't work like that and neither should we. There are some in our community who have demonstrated what it means to open up their homes, their tables to those who are in need, those who have fled from the war in Ukraine. But I'm still left asking, what can I do? How does God want me to respond? Now, as many of you know, last weekend I actually attended a wedding feast. Yes, my son has finally got married. <laughs> it's been four years in the making, but it has happened. But at this feast, I met some extraordinary young people. One young male person. I think his appearance would probably shock most people in Hilperton. For he, there he was with his tattoos, his gorgeous makeup, earrings that I would love to have owned, <laughs> wearing his black, tight black skirt. Not your average youngster you would see walking around our villages. <clears throat> Yet he, in his life, 
demonstrated just what Jesus was talking about. For he spends his life in Calais, feeding the refugees and the asylum seekers. And then there was one of his companions, who had given up a really well-paid job as a, lawyer, as a corporate lawyer to work as a human rights lawyer. When I was in their company, I couldn't help but feel I was in the presence of angels, angels in disguise, in the presence of people who had recognised Jesus' radical call to be humble, to seek and to serve the weak and the lost. They were living it every day. And then we come to the letter to the Hebrews, a letter that was written to those Ju the Jewish diaspora, the people who lived outside of Israel, the Jews who lived out of, outside of Israel, Jews who were quite often influenced by the culture around them, especially the Greek culture in many of the cities that they lived in. Many of these Jews had come to be followers of Jesus. And in doing so, had probably been rejected by their own families. And so they'd formed a new family and the church, the new, their new brothers and sisters. And they were learning what it meant to live in mutual love. they still made mistakes. They're still human. And so the writer of Hebrews was writing to them to warn them against sexual immorality, greed, abuse of power, love and money, etc. and etc. I couldn't help thinking as I read it, have we learned anything? Don't we hear about these things in our newspaper headlines, in our social media accounts, day by day? But Hebrews, the letters of Hebrews, is not written just to individuals within the church, but to the church as a whole. It was about how the church community was meant to live together. So what can we learn from it? We can learn to exercise mutual love, to show hospitality to strangers, to remember those in prison, to remember those who are mistreated, to be faithful in our relationships, to be selfless with our money and our power, and to honour those who bring good news. Mutual love means sharing, sharing in every aspect of our lives. It means sharing in our power, for no one should hold power over another, especially when that power is used in a negative and abusive way. It means that no one in our community, certainly no one who walks through our church doors, should feel uncomfortable. They shouldn't feel disadvantaged or exiled. We are all equals. And we are all equal in the eyes of God. For we all stand equally in need of his grace. Mutual love also means a shared responsibility for each other. Whatever a person's circumstances, when one suffers, we all suffer. So take a moment, look around you. What does life look for the person near you? Could you walk in their shoes today? None of us really know what life is like for those around us. 
We certainly don't know what life is like for the people who haven't actually made it through our doors yet. Can we walk in their shoes? To exercise mutual love can be easy with the people we know, with the people we get on with, the ones we prefer to have at our table. But as Jesus challenged his host, what about the people we find challenging? The ones we find challenging to love? How do we exercise mutual love towards them? For that is where God is, and where we should be also. Hebrews also tells us that we share an immutable promise. That wonderful promise that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a wonderful promise. No matter how much we waver, Jesus is consistent. He is the same. He is and he always will be the one who opened his arms wide on the cross to embrace us with his love and his forgiveness. So let us continue to offer God, through Jesus, our mutual praise. Praise for all he has done for us, for all he has given us. For without God, we are nothing. Our lives lack purpose. But with God, we have everything. So our readings today are more than just lessons in good table manners and right relationships. They're a guide, a guide how to live in the power and love of God. As I was reading and preparing for today's talk, I came across this lovely quote from Rosalind Brown. We have a banquet to offer people in need and God appears to have no seating plan for his extraordinary guest list. Amen. <laughs> As we reflect on those words, let's stand and declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being from the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He has ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as Val brings us our prayers. Let us pray. We need you more than ever in our lives, Lord, to guide us through troubled times and to help us every day. Lord, be in our heads and in our understanding. Lord, be in our mouths and in our speaking. Lord, be in our hearts and in our thinking. Amen. Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine, the needless war and suffering that it will come to an end very soon. We pray too for our own country, for the stress and worry caused to many people with the energy crisis, and that help will be given. We give thanks and praise for all the young people gaining GCSEs and A-levels. Also for work and dedication of all the teaching staff. And we think of the farmers and give thanks for the harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our benefice cycle of prayer, we pray for wardens and deputies in our benefice. We pray for all those named on our prayer list. Also, for all those suffering long-term illness, feeling lonely or depressed, living in care homes or in hospital. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this morning, remember and pray for those who mourn. And we pray for their families at this time. We pay for James Vincent, David Daniels, Arthur Walker, Aisha Rashid Moore, Richard Butterfield, Peggy Wise, Martin Barron, and Verity Linnett. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. So let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. The peace of those of Continue now with our next hymn, Restore, O Lord, the honour of your name.
restore the honour of your name. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All, All things come from you, you and out of your, your own do we give you. you. If anyone is following the Green Book, we're using prayer A today. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Please be seated. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. To you be honour and all praise forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and earth, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, <coughs> Sorry. Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You do be glory and praise forever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. You do be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom with this bread and this cup. We make a memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. As we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, 
We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray in the language most familiar to us, the words he taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unclean. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for us all. Amen. For those who have been unable to receive communion either here or at home, let's pray together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Now, post communion prayer for this Sunday. Lord of all mercy, we, like the grateful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And our final hymn for today is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Yeah. 
at the end of our service, and as always there's notices, most of which can be found in your newsletter. I'm aware that a few people have not received them yet, and we will, if I, if I remember, I'll distribute them when I distribute the video later as, on as well, just to make sure. I'm not quite sure what's happened there. In your newsletter you'll find we have a gift day here on the 10th of September. There will also be an art exhibition here at the same time from the St Mary's Art Group, so please do support that day if you can. This week the church will be open on Thursday morning, details again in the newsletter. And although many, many of you are aware that Bill is, una is unwell and unable to do the food bank collection at the moment, other people are doing it, so please do continue to place your donations at St Mary's or here for collection and they will be passed on. Donations are so very badly needed at this moment in time. I think that's about it, isn't it? <laughs> so. so we come to that time of blessing. <clears throat> the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love and for whom you pray, today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. without you